Rick, I, as I said, I've got a lot of viewer questions uh, coming in for you. Essentially, um, th I think the heart of these questions is, it doesn't feel like you're being paid to take uh, credit risk here. You're just buying the yield curve. What do you think about that, that idea? So, I mean, I, listen, I mean, part of the argument against high yield this, this year has been the spread's not interesting at all. And, um, but you can create, I mean, there are, there are a bunch of parts of the fixed income market that actually you are getting paid for. There are parts of credit. By the way, European high yield, if you're a dollar investor, you swap it back to dollars and you get paid well into the nines for getting that. That, that strikes me as fair. We talk about parts of EM where, where you're taking risk in Mexico, sovereign risk in Mexico, that you're getting paid low to double digits, local rates. And the securitization market is really interesting. CLO market, you buy AAA CLOs, not taking a lot of credit risk. Uh, the non-agency mortgage market, it is interesting today uh, for the same reason. I mean, the residential mortgage market is in good shape. So, listen, if you said, you know, what do you think of high yield or high grade spreads if you're just buying that current spread? Yeah, I mean, it's a fair argument. It's not that, not certainly relative to history, it's not that cheap. Most of the yield you're getting is coming through the risk free rate. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, that's part of the idea of like you can, you can hide in parts of the front end of the yield curve and get a lot of carry. Well, specifically. You know, by, the, by the way, I mean, no, I was going to say one thing on the ETF. We're yeah. running a duration. You know, you can create a seven. You know, the, the yield we're running is about a seven with an interest with a duration or interest rate sensitivity. That's about two. Mm -hmm. And so that that pretty appealing today in an environment where uh, where you know do you want to take a lot of a lot of rate risk out the curve? Well, Rick, you mentioned Mexico, and I want to talk international because I'm looking at the ETF Bink right now, and I see that 22% of the fund is in non-U.S. credit. So when you think about really the global fixed income market right now, where is most of the opportunity? Are you going to find that in U.S. bonds, or how much are you looking to overseas relative to where you usually tilt? So, I mean, listen, the U.S. is always, I mean, in fixed income, it's pretty hard not to have the U.S. as a core part of your portfolio, particularly when you've got these yields. I mean, for you, you know, the front of the yield curve, real rates are over 300 base points. The average, I think, over the last 10 years is negative 50, negative 60. So it's pretty hard not to have a core part of your portfolio in the U.S. But European credit, European IG, investment grade credit, European high yield, swap back to dollars. You can buy a lot of reasonable companies without going far out the yield curve at an awful lot of yield, particularly as a dollar investor. And then the other one being EM, we talked about Mexico, Brazil, the rates market in Brazil, Colombia. There are, um, you know, you're getting paid a, a uh, you know, local rates. As long as you're willing to take some currency risk in EM, <clears throat> It's pretty, they're pretty darn attractive. And you know, the currencies have actually not only not hurt you from a hedging point, they've actually been a real help as you know, you've got money flowing into Mexico as a big winner in the deglobalization dynamic. Same in the same currency in Brazil doing really well. And just real quick, uh, this ETF is interesting to me because it does take a lot of risk relative to other active fixed income ETFs, which typically benchmark against the ag. You're benchmarked against the universal, which is actually a little harder to beat, in my opinion. How far out there are you t uh, purposely going? Are you trying to add a lot of active share? So this is a complement to, say, the ag exposure that a lot of people have? A hundred percent. I mean, you know, the idea around this is to create, there's a lot of investment that goes into HYG, into the traditional passive um, JNK, traditional passive uh, fixed income ETFs, which by the way are great ways to get exposure into those. What we're trying to do is create a more yield, but be really active around getting where your exposure is coming from, being tactical about you know, when it makes sense to own agency mortgages versus owning uh, emerging markets, et cetera. So the idea being, can we, can we hold a higher yield mm -hmm. and then be aggressive about moving it around to where we think the best opportunity presents itself? You know, there, there are times where the new issue market presents opportunity. Now in the securitization market, as you know, as well chronicle banks are selling assets there's some assets that are that are that are trading at a very reasonable levels all right rick we got to leave it there but come back soon this was great that, was that is rick reader of blackrock <laughs> talking about b i n c